Two Geeks, Two Beers podcast. Nerdy obsessions, drunken ramblings with Morgan Jeffrey and Tom Eames. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Two Geeks, Two Beers, a pop culture nostalgia podcast. And if you're here thinking it's a beer podcast, we're afraid there isn't any, but please stick around for the drunken banter regardless. Mm -hmm. I'm Tom, and this time I'll be taking Morgan. Hello through a mini history of one of TV's greatest detectives, Columbo. So, grab your dirty Mac as we dissect the clues to find out just why it is such a beloved show all these years later. Grab your dirty Mac is not a euphemism, nah, to be clear. Maybe it is. <laughs> what are your memories of Columbo? So, I do know the basics. Yes. I know that it is not a whodunit. No. Um, you always find out at the beginning who done the murder. <laughs> yeah, who done it. And then who, yeah, and then it's... Columbo, yeah. You watch him figure it out. Um, I know that. Yeah, he's a he's he's a, he's a bit shabby, um, and they underestimate him. They always do. But yeah. he's he's actually pretty savvy. Yeah. Is, is the thing. Um, I also know he's got a wife. Yeah. I'm sure, you'll get onto this, yeah. Mrs. Columbo. Mrs. Columbo, who you never see. No. Um, like uh, Maris, is it in Fraser? Yeah. 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 Um, and but but that's it. I know the basics. I don't think... You must have seen it. I don't think I've ever seen... How have you never seen a it? A single episode of Columbo. It's always on telly. No. I've... It's like Murder, She Wrote. Like, if you're at home on the afternoon, any yeah. afternoon, but definitely at the weekends, yeah. it will be on. Yeah, no, no question. Quincy like as well. You've yeah. seen Quincy. I've seen Quincy. Of course I've seen Quincy. What do you mean, of course you've seen Quincy? You haven't seen Columbo. I don't think I've ever sat down and watched a full episode of, of Columbo. Really? Yeah. Oh, can we, can we go back to uh, Angela Lansbury solving crimes? Yeah. In... Murder, She Wrote. Mur would you say like murder she wrote yeah I'd be. I'd say like murder she wrote murder she wrote is that how you say it murder she wrote that's murder she wrote is it? it you're probably right I don't think so but I'm saying it the way that I think most people say it <laughs> you are I was going to ask yeah. email in how do you say it but how the hell are they going to explain it I have to, I have to do the capitals bold. And the, yeah. bold, bold yeah. up bold up either murder yeah. or wrote no one's saying murder she wrote are they? <laughs> murder she wrote murder she wrote Mur murder she wrote <laughs> <laughs> question mark yeah. yeah there you go there you go so, coming up, the Christmas icon who could have played Columbo, oh. the surprise, the surprising place he got his legendary attire, and the future Star Trek hero who attempted to carry on the Columbo legacy. Intriguing. Mm. So, in case you didn't know, like you apparently. I know. <laughs> I, this is the thing. I have absorbed a lot of the details through osmosis. Yeah. But I have never actually, which I guess speaks to what well, yeah. cultural impact Columbo has, that I know all you know about all Columbo. About yeah. despite having never seen a full episode. Well, Columbo was an American TV drama starring Peter Falk as Lieutenant Columbo, a homicide detective with the Los Angeles Police Department. After two pilot episodes in 1968 and 1971, the show originally aired on NBC from 1971 to 1978 and then continued in various guises after that. Now, you may get onto this, but mm. they were like, 1968, they mm. were the pilot, and they were like, no. I don't know why and, it took and, so long. And then another pilot <laughs> three years yeah. later. And it went down well, so I don't know why... Yeah. I don't know why there was a big gap, but uh, right. it, it just took the time back then. Yeah. They want quality product, don't want to rush it out. It paid off because after that it ran exactly. for about 50 years. So, uh, They were 10 seasons technically, if you, you know, it's one of the, you know, like Midsummer Murders only does like one episode every two years, but technically it's lazy in another, yeah. So yeah. anyway, there were 10 seasons and 69 episodes in total. So, yeah. But didn't it go on for literally about 40 years? Yeah. There was yeah. a big gap. All right. But even so. Uh, episodes are between 70 and 98 minutes long. That's why I've not watched one. Yeah. Far too long. <laughs> and broadcast in 44 countries. It was like, you know, like Only Fools and Horses, uh, as it got more iconic. Yeah. It, they became more epic episodes, didn't they? It used to yeah. be like the half hour sitcom. And then yeah. towards the end, it was what? like an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because remember Blockbuster. growing up, it was a treat when Only Fools and Horses was on. Yeah. Because it's like, ah, oh, it's like a film. Almost. Yeah. It's the same with Columbo. It's, it's, it, right. it's, you're not just, it's not just a half hour no. in, you're out. It's, it's like settling. Come on. Yeah. Strap in. Exactly. Columbo time. Yeah. So despite appearances, Columbo is an intelligent blue-collar homicide detective who trademark include his rumpled beige raincoat. Mm -hmm. who, you can instantly imagine that, can't you? Yeah. When you're picturing Columbo, even though you've never seen it, you know what his attire looks like. I've seen him. Yeah. I've seen pictures. You know what he Again. looks like. Yeah. Again, and I feel like, like I've undersold. <laughs> I do know what Columbo looks like. I've just never... You know, because in the show, I've said often that I've not seen what we're talking about. Yeah. I feel like Columbo is just something that's just always on. I don't know how you... Grew up with it, never. No, um, I have. I've, I've, I've seen clips. <laughs> you, you watch 10 minutes of it. 
Not even, that, not even eh. that much. Not even that much. No, I've just, just... See what Quincy's up to instead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, does Columbo have uh, <laughs> an opening in which he is... <laughs> Causing his students—I mean, he doesn't have students—but he's causing students to pass out with his with his bants. Yeah, and then he's like on a yacht with a beautiful lady, randomly kissing a beautiful lady yeah. on, a, on a yacht. I don't think so. No. That Quincy opening sold me every time. Um, I've seen clips of Columbo, but I've never—I've never been he's like never right, been on a yacht. I'm gonna—I'm gonna—I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna settle in for seventy to ninety minutes. It's just never sure. never grabbed me. I don't know if that's including adverts, but we'll see. Okay. And his unassuming demeanor, his mm. cigar. He has an old Peugeot four hundred three car. He loves chili. And as you say, his unseen wife, mm. whom he mentions frequently. Yeah, and is that like, do you think he really has a wife? Well, again, you may get onto it, or is this yeah. like part of his his ruse to lull them into a false sense well, of security? Good idea. Good idea. <laughs> he often leaves a room only to return with the catchphrase, "Just one more thing." Yeah. See, I know that as well. Yeah. One last, one last thing. Yeah. So that yeah. was his thing. If you didn't know, that was his one last thing. You think he's just yeah? yeah. You, you think he's finished his questioning? Yeah. And then he turns around. The perp thinks yeah. they've got away with it, yeah. and then he turns around. Ah, oh, just, just, just one more thing. Now, is there any like, um, kind of logic, any kind of procedure to that? Mm. Does it, does doing that make them confess, or is he just being like a bit of a show off when he does that? He's, uh, he's like, he's like, I think they fa- they've fallen for it, and then he's like, oh, I, yeah, I think he's a bit of flair. he knows that he comes across yeah. stupid or whatever, yeah, and he's. He, he's he, having a bit of fun with he's it. He's mucking about and sort yeah. of acting stupid. Yeah. And he, they go, oh, okay, he's, I'm, I can get yeah. rid of this guy, it's fine. Yeah. And then his normally his just one more thing question yeah. beasts, beasts them. They're not expecting it. <laughs> beasts them, yeah. And it's like but, out of nowhere. And so he knows what yeah. to do. But my point is he could just like, he doesn't need to go through the theatrics. No, he, could, he loves it. He, yeah, exactly. He loves it a little bit. But he gets results. you got to you got to play the game. He could, order, no, but yeah. he could get the results sooner is my point. Well, if yeah. he didn't do all of that, he could just go, Oh, I know you did it, and here's why. But he has to like pretend yeah. he doesn't know. Yeah. Pretend to leave the room, and then go. I'll oh, just. He loves a bit of theatre. He loves a bit Columbo. of theatre. Yeah. Fork around and find out. That's his, <laughs> that's his creator. So the character and the show were created by Richard Levinson and William Link, uh, and they popularised, as you said, the inverted detective story format, sometimes referred to. And I never knew this. How catch him? Right. So it's like you know who did it. Yeah. But it's how does he catch? Them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Uh, this genre begins by showing the crime and its perpetrator, and the plot therefore usually has no who done it element of deter- determining which of several suspects committed the crime. It instead revolves around how a perpetrator known to the audience will finally be caught and exposed. Uh, the clues Columbo finds to help him solve the case are sometimes revealed to the audience beforehand, but often not until the episode's end. So sometimes, I guess, you know exactly how the murder was done, so you look right. at, you know what you're looking out for. Okay. And then Columbo's slowly finding these things as we go. So again, you know, you know who's done it. Yeah. And you, you sort you of see the murder at the beginning. Yeah, but you yeah. also sort of know how Columbo's going to catch them. Uh, I guess. Right. Yeah. But it's all about the theatre. Yeah. It's sort about of, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, it's all about the mind of Columbo and how yeah. he's going to do it this yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Um, suspects carefully cover their tracks and are initially dismissive of Columbo's circumstantial speech. Yeah. And apparent ineptitude. Yeah. Uh, they become increasingly unsettled as his superficially pestering behaviour uh, teases out incriminating evidence. His relentless approach often leads to self-incrimination or outright confession. So I think he's just so annoying Yeah. and he won't leave them alone. He yeah. keeps asking more and more questions. Yeah. So in the end, I go, oh, fine, I did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I get this might work, right, for the first few years of his career yeah. where everyone's underestim- <laughs> uh, under, yeah. underestimating him. Surely by now he's solved so many cases. You think you think like people would, word would get round is what yeah, you're yeah. saying and they'd be on. like, you've solved like 58 cases this month. He's like, nah, I'm, 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 I'm a bumbling I'm, fool. I'm, I'm, I'm a bumbling fool and they're like, didn't you like, yeah, like catch like 300 yeah. murderers and he's like, ah, no, d- d- don't worry about it. He has to go to a different state like the yeah. Hulk at the end of each episode yeah, yeah, he has yeah, to yeah. go to a different one. Maybe. Um, but I, I, you do kind of sometimes feel like I remember my, because my mum watches, she loves all these sort of um, you know, crime shows. And yeah. So whenever I go home, these sort of shows, the amount of times I've seen Columbo yeah. over the years, uh, and she just gets annoyed at Columbo. Like, <laughs> why? Because he's just annoying in terms of. Well, yeah, he's meant uh, to be. Exactly. Yeah. Not, no, I don't think you're getting the. <laughs> no, he's meant to be annoying. Cause, yeah. And if anything, she wants the perpetrator to get away with it. It's like, oh, leave him alone. It's right. Like, he just murdered someone in cold blood. Let Columbo do his job. Uh, here is a little trailer. Mm. Couldn't find any decent promos of the time. Mm. So here's one of those dodgy DVD promos okay. that you get sometimes. 
You know his car, his cigar, Aren't those evidence? and his dog. It's, it's around the house and drawers. But do you know who are you? His first name, Lieutenant. 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 We'll get onto that. The biggest name in crime solving is now on DVD. Is that a fight? He's back on the case. Do you have another minute? And something's bothering him. Excuse me, just one more thing. I wanted to ask you, do you have a match? I can just pencil coffee. For all those questions. Four-time Emmy Award winner Peter Fox stars. We want that. Will you just shut up? As America's See, he's getting annoyed. Isn't that something? Winner of 10 Emmys and one Golden Globe Award. What is your point? I'm not sure I have. Leonard Nimoy? Now you can own all your favorite episodes of Columbo, seasons one through seven. How was that for time? And this was back when those DVD box sets were huge. Yeah. Imagine having all of that on VHS as well. I mean, think oh. how thick your, your whole like uh, mantelpiece would just be it's full an, of that. It's an entire bookcase. Yeah. Full entirely of uh, Columbo VHS tapes. Uh, so as we say, Columbo was created by Levinson and Link, who said that Columbo was partially inspired, of course, yeah. by Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment character, Porfiry Petrovich. Not the first time that uh, Petrovich from Crime and Punishment has come up on this podcast. No, I'm lying. It, oh, of course it is. I would have, of course genuinely, if you were like, oh no, we brought it up in Animals Father Wood. I'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, as well as J.K. Chesterton's detective, Father Brown. Oh. Is this the same Father Brown that I'm thinking of? Yeah, the, of, of daytime TV. Yeah. Fame. yeah, it must be. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, the original Columbo. Starring uh, Mark Williams. Yeah. Do you want me Mark Williams? Yeah, of the, yeah. Of Fasho fame. Yeah. I was thinking, yeah, I've got mixing up the snooker player, but he's always called Mark Williams. Anyway, other sources claim Columbo's character is also influenced by Inspector Fichet from the French suspense thriller film Les Diaboliques. Oh, yeah. I've seen One it. of your favourites? Oh, I've seen it. Yeah. I've, have, have you? I, yeah, I've watched that. I haven't watched Columbo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah, yeah. famously. Wow. Yeah. Good. Uh, the character first appeared, though, in a 1960 episode of the TV anthology series, The yeah. Chevy Mystery Show, titled Enough Rope. Now, is this one of the pilots? No. So they effectively had yeah. three, three Someone pilots. Someone else played Columbo first. How, how, why did it take them so long to go? No, this they is, just took their time. This is good. Took right. their time. Right. This was adapted by Levinson and Link from their short story, May I Come In, yeah. which had been published as Dear Corpus Delisti. Delisti? Delisti? I can't speak uh, Latin. How do you pronounce that? D-E-L-I-C-T-I. Delicti. Delic Delicti. In an issue of Alfred Hitchcock's Mystery Magazine. The short story featured a police lieutenant then named Fisher. The first actor to portray Columbo, character actor Bert Freed, was a stocky character actor with a thatch of grey hair. Freed's Columbo wore a rumpled suit and smoked a cigar. He otherwise had few of the other now familiar Columbo mannerisms. The character is still recognisably Columbo and uses some of the same methods of misdirecting and distracting his suspect. Wow, the original Columbo. Yeah. So he, and he didn't get the gig? No. Oh. Couldn't get any clips on YouTube, so sorry about that. Never mind. Levinson and Link then adapted the TV drama into the stage play Prescription Murder. Right, so they had that. So, so a short story. Yeah. Then he was in an anthology series. Yeah. Then, there was a, then there was a play. Yeah. And this is before we even get into the TV part. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. This was first performed at the Current Theatre in San Francisco in January 1962 with Oscar-winning character actor Thomas Mitchell in the role of Columbo. Mitchell was 70 years old at the time and sadly he died of cancer while the play was touring uh, and Columbo was his last role. Wow. One last thing. Yeah. Uh, in 1968, though, the same play was made into a two-hour TV movie that aired on the NBC. The writers suggested Lee J. Cobb and Bing Crosby wow. for the role of Columbo. However, Cobb was unavailable and Crosby turned it down because he felt like it would take too much time away from him playing golf. Sure. So, you know, by that point in his career, twilight of his career, he's, he's, thinking, ah, just... he's like, I got white Christmas money. Yeah, I, I don't need it. I don't need this. I don't need it. No. Uh, director Richard Irving convinced Levinson and Link that Falk, who excitedly said he would kill to play that cop, do an impression? I would kill to play that. Why are you asking me that? I haven't seen Columbo. What, like, it's not going to be my best, is it? <laughs> we'll save it to the end of the episode when you've seen enough clips. All right. You'll be able to do it. All right. uh, he could pull it off, even though he was much younger than the writers had in mind. So originally, Columbo was meant to be, you know, an elder statesman in yeah. the 70s. How old is Falk at this point? <sighs> Should we find out? Yeah. What do you reckon? Oh, I bet he's like 28 or something. <laughs> 28. De depressing. Well, so this is 1968. Yeah. Peter Falk was born in 1927. Quick maths? Uh, 41. 41. Yeah. Only a few years away, mate. That's all right, though. I know, but... I'm still, I'm still, I'm not as old as Columbo. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> so, uh, originally a one-off movie of the week, Prescription Murder, has Falk's Columbo pitted against a psychiatrist played by Gene Barry. In this movie, the psychiatrist gives the new audience a perfect description of Columbo's character. And due to the success of the film, NBC requested that a pilot for a potential series be made to see if the character could be sustained 
on a regular basis. Very fussy. It's like I know. It's like can we have oh. a can we have a pilot? It's like well, we just made a TV movie. Yeah. Nah, it's not enough. Uh, there was a play. Nah. nah, nah. Um, well, there was also uh, an episode of an anthology series. Yeah. Uh, uh, and a short story. We need, we need no, more. We need more. Yeah. We need more proof. But this will work. But it, it took you know what three years before yeah. the 1971 90 minute TV version of uh, Ransom for a Dead Man with Lee Grant playing the killer. And the popularity of the second film finally prompted the creation of a regular series on NBC Jeez, that premiered in September that year as part of the NBC mystery movie Wheel series and rotation alongside McLeod, McWillen, McMillan and Wife. Mc, Mc, <laughs> Mc, McWillen and Wife. And other whodunits. I'm not familiar with, Mc, with McMillan and Wife. Clearly not. Clearly yeah. not, because I can't even say it. Yeah. But I'm sure it was great. <laughs> um, according to TV Guide, the original plan was that a new Columbo episode would air every week. That's how a TV series works. Yeah. However, look, we waited three years for, for each episode, as long as it's not three years. Save, between each savor one. it. Yeah. Uh, Folk refused to commit to such a busy schedule given his steady work in motion pictures. Oh, at right. the time. He's, he's busy he'd he'd already been in quite a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, the network arranged for the Columbo segments to air once a month on Wednesday nights. This is it's, it's like two geeks, two beers. This is, yeah, I was going to say lazy. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, glass houses. No, but that is so, right. So they went, Right, we've done a we've done a short again. Don't want to labour the point, yeah. but they've done a short story. Yeah. Then they've done uh, an episode of an anthology series and a play. Uh, and I forgot about the play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they've done another pilot and then another pilot. Yeah. And then they're like, yeah, but we'll only do them once a month. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Come on. The high quality of Columbo, Macmillan and Wife, and McLeod was due in large part to the extra time spent on each episode. So because of that, yeah, it meant quality. All right, that's what they said. And it was an immediate hit in the Nielsen ratings and Falk won an Emmy Award for his role in the show's first season. And in its second year, the mystery movie series was moved to Sunday nights where it then remained for its seven-season run. So would you like a perfect example of a typical Columbo move just to understand his methods? I would, I would, love, I would okay. love such a thing. Here's uh, apparently one of the top four most seen or um, requested clips on Columbo's YouTube channel. Mm. Suppose it was you. Season two, episode one. I heard you say something, but I wasn't sure what I you said. I said, suppose it was you. I'm not saying it was you, sir. No, I was just thinking out loud. You know you're an audacious fellow. You see, I have a theory, and I would like to use you as an example. If you don't oh, mind. Oh, please, use me as your example. <laughs> uh, he thinks he's got him. Yeah. Suppose, here, you take your car to Mike's garage. Your wife picks you up. She drives you here. You know, you're really intrigued with <laughs> Mike's getting annoyed. Garage. Yeah. Well, I am sort of because, you see, Mike didn't find anything wrong with it. And it would be a wonderful place to leave it if you wanted to prove that you didn't have a car. Why would I want to prove that? Well, if you didn't have a car, how would you get to Miss Wells' apartment and back here in time for the performance? You see, you can't take a cab because they keep records and there's no buses. You can't rent a car because you have to show your license. Getting in and out of here undetected, that wouldn't be too tough. You know your way around pretty good. (laughs) (laughs) All right, all right, go on. Then you walk to Mike's oh, place, it's only three and a half minutes, I timed it. You get in somehow through an open window, whatever. You take out the car, you drive to Miss Wells' apartment, you commit the crime, replace the car, and you walk back here. Is that it? Well, I, I don't know, I think it's a little thin, Lieutenant, uh, especially that bit about the car, you know, that... Business about the car. I don't think that's very good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, right. That is thin, yeah, the car. Except for the fact that you forgot about the mileage. I forgot the mileage. Yeah. Yeah. You know when you bring a car into a garage, they note down the mileage? And I looked at your car the morning after the crime, and the speedometer showed nine miles more than when you brought it in. Of course, you drove that route from... uh, Mike's garage to Miss Wells' house. Exactly nine miles. <laughs> oh, well, I, I think you might have something there, Lieutenant. Of course, one of the garage mechanics could have taken my car and driven it around just to test it. They don't remember that, sir. <laughs> they don't remember that? No, sir. Oh, I'm having a little he's done him. difficulty yeah, he's got imagining him. this hypothetical court case. I mean, there's no real proof. The, uh, there's uncertain garage mechanics. No, I don't think your theory holds up too well, Lieutenant. You see, I didn't kill Jennifer Wells. 
And it looks almost like a certainty to me that her untimely death will go down as an official suicide. Well, sir, I want to thank you very much for your time. Any time, Lieutenant. Right. Ah, he's, he's fine. He's good. He's got it. He's fine. He's, 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 he's all right, isn't he? Brief panic, but he's Oh, gone. listen, just uh -oh. one more thing. Um, I know you don't agree, but at least I've convinced my superiors that Jennifer Wells was murdered. It was not a suicide. And they've officially assigned me to the case. <laughs> That's my specialty, you know. Homicide. See? I think I should have watched some Columbo. I really enjoyed that. It's good, isn't it? It is good. Isn't it just great? He's just so watchable, isn't he? It's very good, folk, because yeah. he he can play the idiot. Yeah. At, but, but it switches it. When he switches, yeah. you you believe that's that's a that's a tough balance. You believe him that he's also super smart. Yeah. Also, on paper, it not being a whodunit, knowing who the killer is, you think, well, that sort of removes yeah, some yeah. of the some of the jeopardy, some of the intrigue. But the the genius, mm. I'm really into it now. <laughs> <laughs> the genius of a how catch him yeah. is you know it's that guy yeah. and it's like how but it's like get him Columbo yeah. get him it's like really exciting because yeah. you're like yeah get him yeah. get him yeah it's, it's yeah. yeah I mean not I don't think you could do it with any detective no every detective no but, no that's um, that's true yeah but it just works it so works well. because they underestimate him yeah. and I'm presuming that it's a it's kind of like a, a thread that carries that the, the people he's after are always like smug pricks. Yeah, like easy. smug. Well, there's some episodes where you do kind of feel sorry for the killer because, and so does. Well, your mum did. Yeah, yeah. Leave him alone. Because um, uh, for the reason they killed them wasn't right. You no, know, and so yeah. But that guy was but, like, yeah, most of the time, ah, get him, sort of get him, Colombo, yeah. <laughs> get him, get him. Um, so, 11 years after the show ended in 1978, yeah. it was brought back in 1989 by ABC. So, a good 11 years later. So, barely any Columbo in the 80s. Yeah. Now, was it officially, like, cancelled? Or were they is it just how long that took them to make another episode? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was cancelled. I think yeah. it just kind of came to a, a satisfying end in the 70s yeah. and they brought it back. It would then continue keep uh, to keep returning for specials until the finale aired in 2003. That is wild. With Columbo Likes the Nightlife with Matthew Reese as one of the killers. Sure. But in the crate, I just didn't think of Columbo as something that was still going in the noughties, but it Two, very much was. 2003. Yeah. yeah. Now, I've just remembered something else I do know about Columbo, since yes. talking about guest stars, is that, um, wasn't like, you may get onto this, isn't like Patrick McGowan in it like yes. six, seven times yeah, or something? Yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Well, he's not a number, is he? He's No, he yeah. maybe, maybe he's in it six times. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, there are so many guest stars yeah. in Columbo over the years. Yeah. Usually the ones who did the murder. And I feel like any show that, any, any um, murder mystery or whatever, yeah. especially American shows from like 70s, 80s. Yeah. You know, well, with this one is obvious because you know they, they're there to do the murder. But it's always the, the, guest star. the most famous but person. It's always the most famous person. Yeah. So if you're well, watching Murder She Wrote and yeah. suddenly William Shatner's in, you're like, well, yeah. obviously he did the murder. Especially, Why would you have him in it? Especially if he like pops up for one scene. Yeah. Like, well, you're obviously <laughs> not hiring, you're not hiring <laughs> Shatner <laughs> no. for that little morsel. No. Shatner's I would have mi would have mixed it up a bit. Yeah. Cast William Shatner. Yeah. Stunt casting. And then he's just just in it. Yeah. Just just <laughs> just hanging about. So um, some of uh, my favourites include yeah. Johnny Cash. It's Johnny Cash. Who, uh, you know, at this point hadn't done much acting. Yeah. He appeared in Swan Song. He was yeah. a philandering gospel singer. He wanted to get rid of his wife. Yeah. He found a novel way to commit murder with a plane crash, then started cavorting with girls in swimsuits almost before the body was cold. Johnny. Johnny. I know. Uh, Faye Dunaway was in 1993's It's All in the Game uh, for a bit of a comeback for her, uh, where Columbo was seemingly almost seduced by her character in an attempt to get away with murder. Falk wrote the episode. <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> but he, he, didn't, he didn't cheat on Mrs. Columbo, but he, all, you know, he does have a little kiss with her. He yeah. a little smooch. Peter, want you to come back for another Columbo. Uh, uh, two conditions. Who's free? I, I, I write it, and, <laughs> and I get, get to snog Faye, Faye Dunaway. <laughs> Please. Faye Dunaway, Faye Dunaway, Faye Dunaway. <laughs> Anyway, uh, in Double Shock, Martin Landau... Oh, I love Martin Landau. ...played the double role of celebrity chef and his supposedly estranged banker twin. Sure. This They conspired to kill their very wealthy uncle yeah. and he married a much younger woman, played by Catwoman's Julie Newmar. Yeah. They're uh, thus cutting him out of their inheritance. We'd like to see a little bit of Martin Landau in... Uh, well, a lot of Landau, it sounds like. A lot of Landau. Dub double Landau. Double Landau. Yeah. Lumbo, you're marvelous. You're absolutely bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> Would you lift me out of the tub? Columbo's in a bathroom. Yeah. Yes, sir, if you could please try. I'll stay just like this. Well, I could try, yes. Thank you very much. Just try, and I'll stay just like this. It's Landau 1. <laughs> can't get any leverage. Wait. Landau 2's loving it. <laughs> Can't let Columbo out of the bar. 
That's right, sir. That is perfectly right. And you'll notice, sir, that I'm perfectly dry. I'm not even slippery. I mean, I have my clothes on. And you still could not lift me out of the tub. All oh, right. I was like, well, it's not full of water. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I'll do that in a moment. Do you intend to demonstrate drowning yourself for us, Lieutenant? Uh, no, sir. But I think I can demonstrate is that your uncle could have died from an electrical shock without showing any marks of oh, It's been a nightmare to film this because Landau's wearing two different suits to play the different twins. Yeah. And they've obviously had to like keep going back and forth. Like, uh. well, I don't think I don't think they like went, they didn't film it in all, sequentially. Yeah, exactly. It was not like, Martin, time to change again. They probably filmed all the scenes where he's in grey and then all yeah, the Yeah, that's what I mean, but they had to like keep like, you know, yeah. Yeah. I guess they had an extra or whatever playing in there. Suppose Mr. Paris was in that bathtub there, and somebody came walking in, you see. Officer, would you turn on that light, please? Lieutenant, are you suggesting that someone just sauntered into the bathroom carrying an electric mixer? Well, I'm sauntered. just using this mixer. I mean, anything electrical is what I'm trying to show. Now, here we go. And not supersede. TV went off. Oh. Very quickly now, we should all... Anyway. Just, just love watching Peter Landau, really. Yeah. It's great. Um, and an example of an older Columbo, the penultimate episode, featured Billy Connolly as a murderous conductor. Mm. I'm watching this quite recently, and just, it was one of those ones where I love Billy Connolly and anything, so yeah. I, I always love it. But I was just, I was just one of those ones where I didn't mean to watch Columbo that afternoon. Yeah. Um, and then it was one of those things where... I'm Sucked sitting on the sofa and like an hour, 20 minutes later, I'm like, yeah. oh shit, I'm still watching Columbo. Yeah. It was just so good. But it's just weird seeing Billy Connolly uh, as, a, as a baddie. Really. It, it does feel like this is being generated by AI at this point. <laughs> Billy Connolly as murderous conductor. Yeah, yeah. I realise this is a bad oh, time. Yeah, this is like 2002 or three. It's a good time this. to be drinking. Uh, not right now. Again, by this Thank point you. in his career, hours were not got round. He yeah. must be like decorated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would yeah. it be all right, sir, if I uh, smoked us? Small cigar? Of course. I love a good cigar myself. There's a humidor on the floor. Help yourself. Oh, I'm kind of used to these, sir. Thank you. Please yourself. Light up, sit down, make yourself at home. No more home for poor Gabriel, I'm afraid. Oh, that was unfortunate, sir. It's a tragedy, Mr. Colombo. A tragedy. A wonderful young man with a great future. So I heard, sir. Like a son to me. It's about to say that I killed him. Let's have some music. <laughs> Columbo's looking at Billy Connolly like, what, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I don't think conductors are Tchaikovsky. like real, by the way. Do you know? I mean, I don't think they're fictional. I think they're, they're doing it but regardless I, of whether they are there or not. I always thought that as well. It's yeah. like if it's not true, yeah. let's test the theory. Just, don't tell them. Just, just, just try, just try it. Yeah. I reckon they could. Orchestras could play without a conductor. I think they're And his daughter Clementine. Oh my darling. Oh my darling. Oh my darling Clementine. You were lost and gone, gone forever. Dreadful sorry, Clementine. Anyway, Billy Connolly and Peter Falk enjoying a sing song. Sure. Uh, other legends included yeah. William Shatner, yeah. Leonard Nimoy, yeah. Leslie Nielsen, right. Roddy McDowell. Yes, Two Geeks Hero. Yeah, Vincent Price, Janet Lee, wow. and probably the best ever in a serious role, Dick Van Dyke in 1974's Negative Reaction as a photographer who faked the kidnapping of his alcoholic wife, then blamed her non-existent abductors for her murder. Now, this one in particular is amazing, just because Dick Van Dyke never plays a bad guy, does yeah, he? Yeah, no. He's just so lovely. So lovable. And and so in this one, he looks great in his beard, like he always does, but particularly in this episode. <gasps> yeah. and, and it's just, again, this is one, because it's Dick Van Dyke, like, oh, just let him get away with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your mum is like... His wife was, was Shaking her fist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> she probably deserved it. <laughs> If you're not happy to be married to Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> I love Dick Van Dyke's face. He just, Clover walks in, he's like, oh, fuck. Oh, this guy again. Mr. Glasgow, sir. <laughs> he rolled his eyes. Really annoyed. Oh, good afternoon, Lieutenant. Uh, I've been looking all over for you, sir. You have? Yes. Uh, I hope I'm not interrupting. No, you. no, no. Um, 
Well, it's, been a, it's a wonderful turnout you have here. Yes, isn't we're it? very, very oh, pleased. Oh, Paul, the pictures are uh, wonderful. Plumage. Just lovely. How tall is Peter Falk? Just lovely. Not the tallest, but... Can't be very. Did you no. want something? You must love him. <laughs> Short King Columbo. Is yeah. there some place, sir, that you and I could uh, talk? Columbo, you're becoming very annoying. Do you know that? Paul, <laughs> why don't you use the old studio? See, what? this time, yeah. Columbo's doing it right. He's in a crowded area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it is it kind of common police procedure that he, he goes and confronts these yeah, one -on -one, da dangerous murders yeah. one on one and then yeah. sort of tells them I know no, you did it. I know you did see, it without, see you later. Saying, without saying it, but I know you did it. There must be a few times they just Well he's uh, doing it now, he's doing it now. They got on their own in another room. What if Dick just fucking freaked out? Exactly. He might. What? Colombo's got balls. Oh, that's all right. Of course you're probably on duty anyway. That's a good beard though, isn't it? It is, but it also sort you of looks like duty, aren't you? it's stuck on. Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah. It's so quaffed and perfect. Chaos, yeah. No, it isn't. Yeah. Every day that I go out, I spend 24 hours on a book. But that's besides the point. This is a terrific book. I went through it last night five or six times. Do you know how many photographs you have in this book? <laughs> Lieutenant, I have never counted my photographs. You took 522 photographs. 522 pictures. You took 522 photographs, and I have to tell you something. I've been to San Quentin a few times. You know, in the early days, I used to take prisoners up there. And I want to tell you, you've really captured the mood of the place. It's very depressing. <laughs> well, Lieutenant, a camera is like an artist's palette. Tool is nothing without the art. Look at this one. I brought that into the Ukraine with me. Must have been 11 years ago. Maybe it was even more than that. You were there seven weeks, sir? What? San Quentin. It says here in the jacket, you were there for seven weeks. You worked there. You slept there. You ate with the prisoners. That's right. That's what I thought. May I show you something? Mm-hmm. You see that, sir? Mm-hmm. You see that man in the background? Yes. That's Mr. Deschler. Really? Why, yes, I believe it is. You know, when I saw this book in your office and I realized that you'd spend that much time in San Quentin, I knew I had to go out and buy it. You know how many other photographs of Mr. Deschler are in here? Oh, Lieutenant. Nine. Nine other photographs of Mr. Deschler in here. Get him, Wait, Combo. <laughs> Get him. Get him. Get Dick. <laughs> There's another one. See that? Mm hmm All right. All right. It's Deschler. But, sir, in your sworn statement, you said that you never met the man. Oh, oh, he's got him. Got him. Sure, you don't expect me to remember one obscure man from the thousands I photographed over the years? I didn't even know the man's name. But not his name, sir. His face. Your business is faces. I thought maybe you had met him when you were at the prison. Well, I didn't. And even if I had, I wouldn't remember it. Lieutenant, maybe. Maybe he remembers me from that visit. And probably knowing that I was well off, he picked me for his next victim. That's a possibility, sir. You don't think so, huh, Lieutenant? You believe that somehow I'm responsible for my wife's death. Oh, don't deny it, Lieutenant. You're like a little shaggy-haired terrier. He's got a grip on my trouser. You won't let go. I can't turn around without you staring up at me with that blank, innocent expression on your face. There you go. Yeah. I won't deny, sir, that I have problems with this case. Lieutenant. Please. Yeah. That yeah. clip uh, was from the official Columbo YouTube account. Yeah. And the title of the clip was Columbo Irritates the Suspect, which I feel like <laughs> could apply to any episode. Any clip from any episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of the best episode, mm. I went for the most reliable source. Yeah. The Columbo File blog. Sure. Uh, where they have rated every episode using a particular format. So my kind of person is yep. on this website. Well done, you. Spreadsheets involved. Yeah. Yeah. They've written here for the for the sake of <laughs> for the sake of posterity. Here are my personal rankings of all forty five classic era Columbo episodes that aired between sixty eight and seventy eight. So he hasn't doesn't care about eighty nine onwards. Oh, okay. So is it, is it generally accepted that yeah, classic, classic era Columbo is the, is the I good? I still think good they're pretty stuff. good after that. But yeah. These these are the the right. good ones. To aid your understanding of how highly I rate episodes, I've banded them into A, B, C, D, and Z lists. Wow. These bands equate to A list equals unbelievably good television, preferable to all other shows ever made. Yeah. B 
B-list. Outstanding entertainment, better than almost any other TV ever made. So it's like a, like a mediocre Columbo episode is still better still than most other, here. yeah. C-list. Yeah, I would happily watch any time they came on TV, but I'd rarely select them from the DVD collection. Yeah. D-list. Lesser Columbo efforts with some redeeming features. Yeah. Z-list. Will only watch under extreme duress. Well, it sounds quite like <laughs> up and down. Yeah. There shouldn't be any Z-list. No. It should, be, it, should, it should be brilliant across the board. But anyway, as voted for by the readers of said site, number two was the Steven Spielberg directed mm. Murder by the Book starring Jack Cassidy. Mm. But the best episode ever was Any Old Port in a Storm from season three, which starred Donald Pleasance as the yes. killer. And it has quite, I'd say, the moving epi- ending to the episode yeah. as Columbo drives him to jail. Oh. Um, and, just an- and just another great acting masterclass between yeah. two legends. Who's going to look after all this? Uh, I love Donald Pleasant's voice. Yeah. The grapes and plant. It'll go on, Sam. That's the only place in my entire life where I was ever really happy. I took the liberty of bringing along a surprise. Huh? <laughs> Monte Fiasconi. That's an excellent dessert wine. I was hoping you'd like it. And very suitable for the final course. Donald seems all right. Yeah. He's not a dick. No. See, it's one of them. Literally. Yeah, Columbo doesn't he doesn't feel happy about this, but he has to do his job. He has to do his job. Cheers. Yeah. So, uh, a few years before his death, Falk expressed interest in returning to the role. In 2007, he claimed he had chosen a script for one last Columbo episode, Columbo Here No Evil. The script was renamed Columbo's Last Case. And ABC just said, nah. What are you thinking? Because it never really had an end. It feels like Columbo never got the respect no. it deserved. Obviously it won, where's the respect? <laughs> Obviously it won like Emmys yeah. and Golden Globes yeah, and not... got critical acclaim. Yeah. But it took so long for anyone to commission what is now regarded as one of the greatest crime shows yeah. shows yeah. ever made I'm, I'm suddenly I've, 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 gone, I've done a complete I'm so behind Columbo now yeah. and then they just went ah nah yeah. don't want any more Columbo but it'd be like you know Poirot his yeah. final case was Curtain. you know big big deal imagine yeah. if they were like <sighs> ITV they made all of them yeah yeah, yeah. last minute they went nah just leave it yeah yeah that's what, like, come maybe, on. Maybe if you uh, write it as a short story and then as a play and then maybe do a few pilots, then maybe we'll make it yeah. as, a, as a, yeah. a final episode. Yeah. And then sadly, he was diagnosed with dementia in late 2007. Now, weirdly, I this I do know. Yeah. Like, I know this tragic fact. Never Again, never seen an episode of yeah. Columbo, but I do know this yeah. tragic fact. And then in a 2009 trial over his care, physician Stephen Reed said that Falk's condition had deteriorated so badly that he could no longer remember playing a character named Columbo nor could he even identify him. That's sad. Isn't Tragic, isn't it? Yeah. And then he died on June 23rd, 2011, aged 83. Yeah. Um, as I say, Falk won many awards for Columbo. Good. And uh, this clip of him accepting the Emmy in 1972 just showed how great and cool a guy he was. And the winner is... Peter Falk, Columbo. <laughs> Here at 43. Yeah. And I'm going to put it out there. Yeah. A young Columbo. Yeah. Sexy. <laughs> there, even though he's. Yeah. He's, he is he's, a bit of a sex symbol in his, his own weird way. In his way. own weird way. Yeah, he's very I, attractive. I, I, I bet he was. Yeah. yeah. But keep the Mac on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The dirtier the better. <laughs> right. Well, it's, uh, it's terrific to win. <laughs> what an easy laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's, uh, it's terrific to win. I, uh, He's so cool. One easy life. I'm trying to figure out some way to appear humble. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
They all love him. Yeah. It's not going to work. <laughs> I, uh, I was in New York yesterday. Today is Sunday, isn't it? And uh, I had some business in the morning, and I did two shows, and then I grabbed a cab, and I raced to the airport, and I tried to catch that at 11 o'clock. I figured to miss it, and I did. So I laid over in, in Kennedy for three hours to catch Eastern out to uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I was there for two hours, called Delta into Dallas, Texas, and I was two hours there to get TWA into L.A., and... I know it's not a very interesting story. I, just, <laughs> I only mention it because I wanted to point out that uh, in regard to whether or not I wanted to be here, I was relatively indifferent. Uh, <laughs> but I wouldn't be here and there wouldn't be any Colombo. Uh, there wouldn't be any show. There wouldn't be anything if it wasn't for uh, uh, Bill Link and Dick Levinson. Uh, nice. Shout out the writers. Yeah. Great guy. Yeah. Uh, they, they created this character and they created this format and they wrote and they produced and, and it's their idea. It's the, their baby. The, the whole thing is theirs and I'm very grateful to them. I um, also want to thank Dick Irvin. He's believed in this thing for about five years and fought for it and I don't think with his, without his persistence, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what really did have to fight. Yeah, well done. I can thank Everett Chambers for a lot of things. I, I think I'll pick two, making me laugh and being a man. And uh, uh, Steve Botchko for the writing he did every week. And then uh, I, I want to thank my family for giving me uh, a week of solitude and total concentration, which allowed me to compose this acceptance speech. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what a great guy. That's how you do a speech. So charismatic. Yeah. Isn't he? So cool. Yeah. So, fact smash. Fact smash. We don't have a jingle yet. No. Fact smash. Come on, guys. Yeah. Someone out there must be able to make us a jingle. Please. Yeah. yeah. We'll literally do anything. Otherwise, we'll just keep going like... Fact smash. Facts to be won. Smash is to be had. Yeah. yeah. That's the level. Yeah. Unless someone supplies <laughs> us with anything else. <laughs> literally anything. So, Columbo's wardrobe was provided by Falk. What, just his clothes? Yeah. They were his clothes, including the high-top shoes and the shabby raincoat. Well, we, we, we just need a dirty Mac. Yeah, I've got one of I've those. got one, actually. Got yeah. one, yeah. He said of the raincoat, I just felt comfortable in it. So I don't know yeah. if it was even written down, the coat had yeah. to look like that. I think he just turned up and he was like, yeah. Looks good. I'll do. Yeah. He often ad-libbed his character's idiosyncrasies, he, he, such as fumbling through his pockets for a piece of evidence and discovering a grocery list, uh, asking to borrow a pencil, becoming distracted by something irrelevant in the room, blah, blah, blah. Um, he inserted these into his performance as a way to keep his fellow actors off balance. Oh. Uh, he felt it helped to make them confused and impatient reactions to Columbo's antics even more genuine. So, but yeah. could just rely on them to be good actors, but not yeah. just going to actually annoy them. <laughs> we know like Ricky Gervais would just keep doing things. Yeah. We've seen the outtakes of Martin Freeman's like, oh, what are you going to do this time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very much the same sort of thing. Yeah. Except they didn't break out in laughter every single time and ruin the scene. Maybe they did. Maybe they did. Maybe they did. Maybe they did. Uh, according to Levinson, the catchphrase, one more thing, was conceived when he and Link were writing the play. Uh, we had a scene that was too short and we <laughs> had already great. had Columbo make his exit. We were yeah. too lazy to retype the scene, so we had him come back and say, oh, just one more thing. It was never planned. <gasps> I like that. Yeah. that so that, that's the reason. Yeah. Is they, is, they were like, oh, we could, we could go back and rewrite the scene, So, all, nah. but... but Nah, just he's already walked out. At, at it on the end. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as you mentioned earlier, Patrick McGowan yeah. played a Columbo murderer more times than any other actor. Four yeah. times. And four different characters. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. crazy. Got the range. Like a repertoire company. Yeah. Uh, Jack Cassidy and Robert Culp each had three appearances as killers, whereas William Shatner and George Hamilton were a killer twice. Now, I like Shatner. Mm. I'm not, this is not, I'm not going in on Shatner. Good. It's not the place to do it. No, it's really not. <laughs> Does Shatner have the range to play two different characters? Like, you watch... In one one of them, yeah. he looks like Shatner. Yeah. The other one, yeah. he'll have a tash. Yeah. Because I'm like, I love Shatner, yeah. but you watch a Shatner project because you want him to bring the full Shatner. Yeah. You're not like, no. oh, he's, yeah, do yeah. he's doing something different here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Nah. But right. anyway, but, yeah, it, but, but if, if Shatner calls you up and says, I want to do it again, you're yeah. like, oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. More shot the better. Patrick's done it four times. That's yeah. not a problem. Uh, there is a bronze statue of Columbo and his dog, right. dog, in Budapest, Hungary. It was unveiled in 2014. It's a great statue. Have a look. It is really good. Any particular reason it's in Budapest? Well, Peter Falk is rumoured to be a distant relative of Mixer Falk, oh. the well-known Hungarian politician, journalist and author who lived 
uh, from 1828 to 1908. But there's no statue of him, but there uh, is a statue of him. I mean, less weird than the Michael Jackson statue at Fulham that was there for sure. many years. Sure, Um But, you know, yeah, great. I might go to Budapest just to see that. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've been to Have Bud- you? Budapest. Yeah, but I didn't see didn't the Columbo statue. No, I didn't yeah. know it was there. Yeah. Now I know. Now you know. Uh, Columbo only lets a killer get away with murder once. Right. In Forgotten Lady from season five, when a terminally ill Grace Wheeler, played by Janet Lee, cannot even recall she committed the crime, so she says, but, you know. He also lets accomplice Lisa Martin escape uh, to Europe in It's All in the Game in order to extract a confession from her mother, Lauren Statton, played by Faye Dunaway, as we mentioned earlier. For the great good. Yeah. Uh, Peter Falk famously only had one eye after losing one to cancer at the age of three. What? I didn't realise that was the the cause. I just thought he had a a squint. Yeah. I didn't realise he only had one eye. Only one eye. So I guess it was a glass eye. Right. Yeah. Many fans wonder whether Columbo also had just one eye. The answer may be yes, as Columbo states that three eyes are better than one when helping a colleague conduct a search for evidence in 1997's A Trace for Murder. Yeah. And even though that's just a result of, you know, Peter Falk actually yeah. only having one eye, yeah. there's something about the fact that, like, he's this one-eyed detective, yeah. but he sees everything. Yeah. <laughs> See? I mean, Very good. Getting Very really good. into it. Yeah. Yeah. Columbo's first name is notably never mentioned in the series, but Frank Columbo or Lieutenant Frank Columbo can occasionally be seen on his police ID. Feels like a Frank. He does look like a Frank. Yeah. This ambiguity surrounding Columbo's first it's name. Am- ambigu- ambiguity. 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 Hey. Fuck me. I prefer ambiguity. The, amb- the ambiguity. <laughs> the ambiguity. The ambiguity surrounding his name. Oh, God, that's one of the worst ones. <laughs> the ambiguity. <laughs> this ambiguity. I have had a vodka and coke before coming here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and a bit, and a bit, yeah. This ambiguity surrounding Columbo's first name led to the creator of the trivia encyclopedia, Fred yeah. Elworth, yeah. to include a false entry that listed Philip Columbo um, as Columbo's full name as a copyright trap. What? I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah. So when the board game Trivial Pursuit included Philip as the answer to the question, what was uh. Columbo's first name, Worth launched a $300 million lawsuit against the creators of the game. Uh. The creators of the game argued that while they did use the Trivia Encyclopedia as one of their sources, facts are not copyrightable and there was nothing improper about using Encyclopedia as the production of a fact-based game. So he he lied. He lied and then when in they the re- hopes that someone would nick it. And then when they repeated the lie, yeah. he was like, that's my, uh. that's my lie, you can't have there it. There you go. I want $300 million dollars. <laughs> he didn't get 300 million dollars. The, the totally. district court judge agreed with uh, what? Trivial, you know, with trivial Pursuit. It's fine. Oh, right. <laughs> and the <laughs> and decision was upheld in yeah. uh, 1987. Yeah. Uh, Worth petitioned the Supreme Court of the United States to review the case. Yeah. The court declined. Greedy bastard. He, Ridiculous. I feel like Fred L. Worth. I feel like he needs Columbo to yeah. take him down Come a peg. Come on. 300 yeah. million. Like maybe if he was like do you know what? Yeah. 30 grand will do me. Yeah. They probably would have given it to him. Yeah, just, probably to, just to shut him up. Maybe even a million. Yeah. They might have gone, look, a trophy pursuit, we have a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, here you go. But yeah. 300, no, mate, come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And then we have Mrs. Columbo. Oh, yeah. Spin off TV series starring yeah. Kate Mulgrew. Of a Voyager. Yeah. Star Trek Voyager. Yeah, which aired in 1979, but was cancelled after only 13 episodes. Right. So, Lieutenant Col- So. Mrs. Columbo, never seen in the show, yeah. of Columbo, never was. Yeah. But she had her own own spin-off. But they never interacted? No. All right. So um, each episode featured uh, Mrs. Columbo, here given her first name of Kate, yeah. solving a murder mystery she encountered in her work as a newspaper reporter. Of course. Uh, connections with the original series were made obvious, such as the glaring presence of Columbo's car in the driveway, yeah. the dog. Same dog? Yeah. So the dog was the, was yeah. the, was the crossover star. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And Mrs. Columbo emptying ashtrays containing the famous green cigar butts, yeah. uh, all featured in the show's opening sequence. Um, references were also made to her husband being a police lieutenant. So they were both separately yeah. always uh, solving crimes. Never seeing each other because they're always solving crimes. Yeah, just, just busy. busy. Ships in the night. Yeah. Both crime-solving ships. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, again... It's a bit I, like Young Sheldon, I guess. It's like um, just a spin-off existing at the same time as... Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but, but no, but yeah, but it's very... It's different because yeah, it they're set in, at yeah, the same time. At yeah, the same time. Weird. But there's no, but they're not actually. Other than the dog, yeah. there's no, there's no crossover. Yeah, you think they'd cross over, wouldn't you? Now, then you, you wouldn't be able to keep up the, the uh, thing of never seeing her. Yeah, his show. So you do see her. So I, I, I think I was aware of this. And am I right in thinking that like some people don't think Mrs. Columbo is canon? Yes, Columbo canon. Well, perfectly timed. Oh, all right. So. Yeah. Uh, looking at some of your comments. Yeah. Um, uh, Not uh, my comments. No, just pe- some of uh, you listeners, lovely yeah. listeners uh, on Twitter and, and Facebook. Pete B, yeah. um, looking at his memories, said, 
always mentioning his wife, who I'm sure, I'm not sure ever appeared on screen. She didn't. Apparently, there are fan theories claiming she's a figment of his imagination. Yeah. Uh, and I went on a Columbo fan site, probably the same fan site as earlier. Yeah. And apparently, there are at least three independent witnesses who have, have reported seeing or dealing with her. Yeah, but so, is, but is Mrs. Columbo canon, or is the real Mrs. <laughs> Columbo someone else, or... Uh, yeah, I, I'd like to think it is canon. Yeah. Um, even though... Would you say he's punching with Kate Mulgrew? Well, Mulgrew must have been younger than... Yeah. Yeah. Quite a bit, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, he's, again... He's a dog. Yeah. yeah. Sexy old. Well, not, but, the, not the dog. No, no. But, yeah. When, uh, we talk, when we're talking about a dog making a crossover, we don't mean <laughs> Peter Falk just being a bit of a... No, but I... So I... From the research fans have done... Yeah. She is mentioned by other people. She, right. So it's she, not like in Family Guy where they're like, is it only Brian that hears Stewie speak? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so there you go. Other comments include Pete Holland saying, yeah. I love this show. To this day, I annoy my partner with Columbo impressions. Yeah. And I was hoping you'd do some impressions, but you can't really because you, you... Can you no, do it now? It's kind of got like a, like a James Gandolfini yeah. vibe. It's, yeah. Very it's like, it's, Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like that. Uh, yeah, no, but I, yeah, I don't feel like I've, I've absorbed enough yeah. yet. To, okay, never mind. Maybe in future. Yeah. yeah. Can you do James Stewart saying just one more thing? <laughs> yeah. So let's imagine that James Stewart was, yeah. was cast as Columbo. Yeah. He'd be like... <gasps> Oh, just one last thing. That could be that'd be quite good, actually. Yeah. James Stewart as Columbo. Yeah, he would have been good. Yeah, he'd be like, oh, are you forgetting one thing? Uh, what about the mileage? <laughs> like that, that, that'd be good. Uh, yeah. And uh, Ronnie Ill Patel said, uh, looking forward to this and hearing your attempts at saying just one more thing, which you have done. Well, I have done. You've just done that at least. Not as, all right. I, so it's kind of like, <sighs> well, this will obviously be bad. Nah, don't uh, don't don't spoil it. Don't. No. All right. Don't spoil not... your run of impressions. Because <laughs> they've all been yeah. gold. Yeah. They've all been absolutely gold. All right, I'm not. And as as Ronnie all says, the '70s ones are the best, yeah. and they used to always be on. Yeah. See. Yeah. Even as a kid, I'd want to watch just for the gotcha moment when the murderer realizes they've been outsmarted by this bumbling, scruffy man. Yeah. So that is it for Columbo. So yeah. where would you rank him in TV's most iconic detectives? Well, I've never really given it a, a fair. No. A fair. But you were loving those clips. Fair shake. Just from those limited clips. Yeah. And his great acceptance speech. It looks really good. It is really good. It does it really good. It has been something that I like. I am aware. There's obviously a lot of episodes. To watch. But but the fact that I've never watched a single episode, it is it is for once. It is me that has a glaring <laughs> gap yeah. in my pop culture knowledge. Yeah. Um. I do. I do want to engage properly with with yeah. Columbo and. This has certainly not not put me off. If anything, good. it's, it's good. Uh... I didn't ruin it this time. Then no, <laughs> you, you done it. You done a good job. Well, you, you didn't uh... you do the plot this time. Yeah, you didn't so... do a rambling plot yeah. synopsis of every single Columbo episode. <laughs> Imagine just just four or five of them. So, uh, but I'd say, as we said, yeah, um, Falk's performance is yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. Um, wouldn't normally be bothered in a show like this if I know who did it did the killing. Yeah, but he's so good, and it is that is, is that thing of like get him, yeah. get, get him, Columbo. And also, yeah. can, can you think of any other? shows that yeah. did a similar thing because I think Line of Duty sort of yeah. does that yeah because it's, it's all about how they take the yeah. person down yeah yeah. Um, but not many not many shows you'd think there'd be more that yeah. saw the success of this but right let's copy that but because it's so unique yeah. I guess it would feel like they were just ripping off Columbo exactly. anyone, who, anyone who does a, a How Catch Him now everyone's mm. just like well you're just doing yeah. just doing Columbo that was good um, there is um, a show um uh which is called Poker Face, mm. which stars oh, yeah. Natasha Leone, which does is the same thing. Which is they've acknowledged that it's um right. it's it's influenced by Columbo. Okay. A lot of people have said, you know, if there was ever gonna be a Columbo uh remake, the two people who could do it, Mark Ruffalo. Yes. Got a similar look. Yeah. Or if you went like that kind of like totally different kind of revamp. Yeah. Uh Natasha Leone, who's kind of got like weirdly does have a kind of Peter Falk oh. vibe okay. about her. And in that show, it's the it's a how catch him and she's nice. Yeah, she's solving crimes. <laughs> Worth a watch. Okay, well, for more witty banter about pop culture nostalgia, head to twogeeks2beers.com for all our past episodes. And of course, you can subscribe via Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you'd like to get in touch, we're on Facebook, X, uh, formerly known as Twitter, <laughs> uh, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, all at Two Geeks Cast on those. And you can now watch full video versions of the podcast on YouTube too. And you can email us on podcast at Two Geeks Two Beers. Dot com. And if you'd like to support us, you can do so via our Patreon uh, with various levels of goodies on there, including your own full-length episode mm. just for you, uh, merch and mini-sodes that we record each time we do a new episode. And we'd very much love for you to get in touch over email 
I reckon what we should do is yeah. read out any of the best or most interesting correspondence we get over email because you can write more in an email, can't you? Yeah. On Twitter, you can only do so much. Yeah. You know. Let's do it. Uh, so please do get in touch with anything, perhaps your own personal geek story, or maybe a TV show or film you recently got into from the past, or just how much you've been enjoying the show, and we'll read them out. Yeah. Just like this one from John Taggart, who we thought was Australian yeah. when we first uh, spoke to him, because that's where he lives. Uh, but he said, just to clarify, I'm not actually from Australia. I'm Scottish and I moved here in 2010 at 24. Your voices are a reminder of dear old Blighty. And I think uh, we're of around a similar age. So the podcast is such a lovely nostalgia fest for me. I'm ever so jealous of your respective careers. What there is of it. I'd love to have... Uh, as, <laughs> that, I added that. That was your addition. Yeah. It wasn't just... Yeah. Uh, I've been a bit, bit, bit mean. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to have leaned into pop culture more to make a living. And speaking of which, my favourite episodes of yours are always the ones where uh, something... Uh, I would have watched on TV as a kid springs up the animated X-Men series Lois and Clark Buffy Demon Headmaster Round the Twist and Animals of Farthingwood were all particular favourites actually as a kid I was obsessed with Farthingwood and I don't mean mildly obsessed either yeah. good uh, thank you guys for everything you do please know that you always bring a smile to a homesick boy's face while he's walking his dogs with his airpods in a boy who's nearly 38 but still lovely message lovely John. so yeah please do get in touch with anything you like if you want to be nasty to us, you know, we'll take it. Uh, we'll read it out. <laughs> uh, will we? All right. Yeah. Okay. And we mentioned we're on uh, various social media mm -hmm. as, uh, as at Two Geeks Cast, and we'll sporadically uh, put out a, a few little questions um, just so we can kind of interact with some of our listeners. And we're going to like debate ourselves in future Patreon. Yes. Mini -sodes. Yes. We're going to follow up these questions um, and yeah, thrash them out yeah. in Patreon mini So uh, be sure to subscribe on Patreon if you want to if you want to hear that little bonus content. But uh, yeah, a couple couple of questions we put out there. Um, what we asked uh, flashback to Saturday mornings. What was your go to cartoon or kids show growing up? Uh, Carl Jones responded uh, not with a message but just with a photo of an incredible looking yeah. He Man and She Ra collection. Very jealous yeah. of that. Uh, Philip uh, said Disney was usually Sunday and Warner Brothers, Hanna-Barbera, Marvel, etc. cartoons would be Saturdays. <laughs> so what's up, Doc? Or else any Cosgrove Hall, Pob, stuff like He-Man, Raccoons, uh, Doc Tanyan, Mysterious Cities of Gold, Jason the World Warriors, Teddy Ruxpin, Ulysses 31, yeah. Terror Hawks. What a, what a lineup. Great. Many of, many of which we've covered yeah. in, in previous episodes. Yeah. Uh, Carolyn Percy uh, uh, flagged up Scooby-Doo and uh, Wangles, Wangles said Wacky Races. All great. Yeah. All great. All great. Um, and then we also asked, what's an underrated or lesser known geek movie, series or game that you think more people should mm. check out? Uh, James Pilson Wood said, uh, movie wise, I'd say The Phantom had a pretty cool TV pilot reboot too. Everyone should know The Ghost Who Walks. Mm -hmm. I presume he's referring to the Billy Zane uh, yeah. movie. <laughs> Uh, not planning on tackling that anytime soon, but there may be an iteration of The Phantom oh. that we may uh, may look yeah, into in a, in, a, in a future episode. Uh, Lauren Galloway said The Librarians. Yeah, uh, Theo said uh, a lesser known movie, Willow, which of course we have yeah. an episode yeah. on. Uh, lesser known series, Ghost Whisperer, oh, yeah. starring Jennifer Love, oh. uh, Love, Love Hewitt. And uh, Game, he flagged up uh, Eternal Darkness or Baton Kytos, mm. uh, both the GameCube, uh, GameCube yeah. games. Uh, and uh, Gareth Cutliffe said, always loved this movie as a kid. Nostalgia probably helps this one a lot. Uh, and it's a film called Humanoid Defender uh, from 1980. Yeah, not aware of that one, but we'll check it out. No, yeah. but we love, a, we love a niche pick yeah. that people are passionate about. So yeah, yeah keep, keep an great. eye on uh, on the social media feeds and there'll be more, uh, more questions like that coming soon. Yeah. And we're going to feature soon on another podcast. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we've cheated on ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we've done it. Wait, is that how it works? Yeah, I've done a, a crossover. Yeah. Uh, Tom and I will be guesting on the Jerry Anderson mm. podcast, the official Jerry Anderson podcast. They asked us to come on as guests um, and we'll be appearing on two future episodes of that. It'll be a two-part interview uh, coming soon. So it'll again... On YouTube as well. Yeah, and it'll be... Yeah, exactly. It'll, there'll be a video version on YouTube. Um, so keep an eye um, on our social media feeds, but also the official Jerry Anderson account on X. Um, and I'm sure we'll both be shouting about that when it happens. Yeah, great. Yeah. Well, that is it for now. So have a good one. Yeah. Speak very soon. Yeah. Bye for now. Bye for now. Well, that was it. Good episode. That was good. Yeah, I guess wrap up there. Mm. Um, but before we wrap up, mm. uh, just one more thing. There it is. There, there it is. you go. Hey. That was very that. good. That was yeah. Fine. That was fine. Not one of your best. But... <laughs> I know. I said I didn't want to. <laughs>